Dear Bob, I wrote this at the office each day, and now I will copy it over. Monday morning. As you had previously written, Mother and Dad planned on sending you money, and Carol and I had already bought the ring. Monday, in your letter, you told me that you would like a pipe and some film, so all week waited patiently for your family letter and when it did arrive no mention of the pipe so what could I do if I told them what you wanted then all would be spoiled so we wrapped the ring and the money Friday night after we got your letter I was to take it to work Saturday and mail it which I did but on the way down I bought two films and when I got to the office I unwrapped the package sent one of the boys down after the pipe and rewrapped the package and sent it out you have been so generous to us all I couldn't see you disappointed, so I fixed it up and certainly hope it suits you. And no one knows it but myself. I am afraid when Christmas is all over, my word home won't be worth two cents. But all in all, I can hardly wait. It sure is making my Christmas just about perfect. I hope yours is as good as it can be expected away from home. We hope the package arrived on time. We held it up awaiting final word as to your whereabouts. And that it made you feel good and gave you a little pleasure. From you, I bought Dad a briefcase and a shaving set, a dollar fifty, and the book on the Psalms. Mother, shoes, Ed a game and a flannel shirt, Vin ski poles and a game, Carol half of the blouse, house coat and perfume atomizer, Bill part toward the missile and a military set in a leather zipper case which he wanted. Gee, everyone is going to be so pleased. Dad said Saturday he thought you would probably send him $5 to buy us all a little something. And just think, you've sent $20. You sure are a credit to the family. I'll finish this later and send it out after Christmas. Tuesday morning. Well, no word from Bob. Family is wondering just what you have under your sleeve. Dad thought surely you would send $5. Well, murder will out, so tomorrow all will be told. I have to laugh to myself when I think of what everyone will say after all the fibs I've told. Yesterday, when I came home, I said, Anything from Bob? Just as concerned as the rest. Dad has a faint suspicion you may drop in on us and surprise us, but I hope he doesn't get his mindset on it and be disappointed. I'm trying to convince them that we may get a special delivery tomorrow or a little after Christmas because of the mails or your undependable paydays. <clears throat> of course, they know you won't forget us, and especially since you haven't sent Bill $5 lately. Well, I haven't much more to say now. So far, I've received two surprise packages packages from two girls here so everything is starting out with a bang. I have a feeling this is going to be one of my best Christmases. Bill came home last Wednesday night and looks very good. He's in very good spirits and I suppose it's because he was home once before which I think takes the edge off it all. And of course he's made more friends too by now. By the way, no money from Herman so far. Tuesday afternoon. Still working. I guess we'll have to work all afternoon. Received a beautiful card from Herman, but no money. Of course, he's giving Bill $60 a year, so what could we expect? And just think, still no letter from Bob. Sure is funny. Honestly, I really feel quite guilty when they talk about it at home. The less I'm home, the better, and I sure hate to discuss the matter. When I got back from lunch there were two presents on my desk, a slip from Mrs. Blair, and two pounds of Fanny Farmers from the man I work for. Wasn't that swell? More surprises. Well, at last, Christmas Day, last night, Jack gave me a swell red and blue Garberdine reversible ski jacket. I don't mean jacket, I mean the whole suit. Gee, it's a honey. We got up and went to Mass at St. Francis. We haven't much snow, but it was quite cold this morning, but it's warmer now. The sound book I ordered for Dad won't arrive till January, so I bought a card with a place for money and stuck $2 in it with your little card and a note telling him what it was for. Then I wrapped it up in lots of paper and put it in a box. That was the first of your presents to be opened, and when Dad saw your name, he was just spellbound and thrilled to pieces. Then, after that excitement was over, things went so usual until a package was handed me marked Mary from Bob. I couldn't imagine what was going on, and when I opened it, it was your card and swell gift. Well, it was just as dumbfounded as Dad and the surprise had turned to me. They had said nothing about it to me until I opened it. So it was a complete surprise as the rest were from you. I guess things have a way of shaping themselves for the best because it certainly wasn't planned that I should be so completely surprised. I didn't expect anything from you till later and certainly not five dollars. You certainly have us all beat with your generosity. Mother, Dad, and I just couldn't hold back the tears we were so thrilled. 
I don't know why you spent so much on me. I sure appreciate it. I'm planning to buy new shoes for best with it. I wanted them, but I couldn't afford them. Carol and I didn't bring the radio in until halfway through the presents. That just about floored Pa, and he said it was the best Christmas of all, and Mother too. In fact, everyone has said it. All due to your big, generous heart. Even though you are away, we feel close to you just the same. I guess we're all awarded for the extra trouble and planning we did. We wanted to send you a telegram, but to Cuba... They run awfully high, and they count every word, including your name and address. Dad and everyone is planning to write you, so I'll let them all tell their own story and what they each got. I got a pair of Garberdine ski mittens, a sweater, crucifix, pants, three hankies, fancy pin for a dress, bracelet from Rita, and an evening bag from Aunt Gert and Uncle Leo, which reminds me that we will send your present from them to you tomorrow. We were uncertain where you would be, so we had them send it to us. By the way, let us know how the ring fit. Bill decided nine and a half would be about your size. Well, I've almost written a book. It's so long, I won't read it over, so please excuse any mistakes. We had a swell dinner with turkey, as usual, and all are very full. Jack is here, so I'll end this pretty quick. Thanks very, very much for everything. I just can't tell you how happy I feel about it all. We should have a lot to be thankful for, and it's certainly loads of fun to belong to a big family and one with not too much money. Honestly, don't you find after associating with the others that our family is pretty damn swell and sure gets a lot of fun out of life? Here's hoping your Christmas wasn't too lonesome. I hope it was swell, but couldn't expect too much without snow, tree, and all that goes with Christmas. Being away, though, Makes you appreciate what we have to be thankful for, doesn't it? Well, this has got to be the end, so, so long. Oh, P.S. I forgot to tell you, Carol and I got a pair of scales, so now I can watch my weight. Love, Mary.